السلام علیکم ویئر ویری وار ویلکم ان دا پروگرام ڈپلومیٹک انکلیو فرام چینل فائیو اینڈ آئی ایم یور ہوسٹ ملک منظور احمد ٹوڈے اٹس اے گریٹ پلے فار می دیٹ آئی ایم جوائن ٹوڈے ایکسلنسی ہائی کمیشنر آف کنیڈا ایکسلنسی پیری کالڈر ووٹ ویری وار ویلکم سر ان مائی پروگرام اینڈ ویری وار ویلکم ٹو پاکستان ایز اے ہائی کمیشنر ٹو کنیڈا تھینک یو ویری مچ السلام علیکم ٹو آل آف یور ویورس اٹس اے پلیشر ٹو بی ہیئر Uh, Excellency, first of all, uh, tell me that you recently arrived here and uh, uh, no, you are the High Commissioner to Pakistan. So, uh, what is your first impression about Pakistan and its people here? Uh, well, let me say firstly, I'm extremely delighted to be in Pakistan. Uh, I am a career diplomat. I, I've served in the Canadian Diplomatic Service for 31 years now and Pakistan is my eighth uh, posting abroad. but it's my first posting in Asia. So it's very exciting for me uh, to come and discover a new country, Pakistan, and, and a new part of the world in which I had not uh, served before. I'm relatively new in Pakistan. I've been here for four months now, uh, but I have to say that I, I've been received very warmly, very graciously by everyone who I've met. Uh, the government of Pakistan has welcomed me very warmly. I've met many people in the private sector, in civil society, journalists like yourself, and everyone has extended a, an extremely warm welcome. Uh, so, so I'm very happy to be here and, and enjoying it very much. In terms of my first impressions, I think the, the first thing that I would say is it's clear to me that Pakistan has a very rich and, and, and beautiful culture. Uh, one thing that I have done in all of my assignments abroad is traveled as much as possible in the countries to, to, to learn and, and see as much as I can. In the four months that I've been in Pakistan, I have already uh, traveled outside of Islamabad four times. I visited Lahore, uh, Karachi, Suwat, and just earlier this week, I was in Multan and Rahawalpur. Uh, Bahawalpur. Bahawalpur. Uh, sorry, I, I find it a <laughs> difficult uh, name to pronounce. Bahawalpur. Bahawalpur. Uh, I, I was there for a couple of days, and I've been impressed at, at the tremendous diversity in the country, each different city and region. Um, is, is rich and, and beautiful in its own way. There, there's a tremendous diversity uh, of culture and, and, and landscape in, in Pakistan. Uh, another impression that I have is that Pakistan is a country of great energy and, and creativity. And, and I think especially among the young people, uh, Pakistan has a young population. Yes, more, uh, more than 60%, I think. Or would be under 30, perhaps. Yes. Um, Uh, compared to many other countries like Canada, Pakistan has a very young population. I've had the opportunity to, to meet many young people, many students, and I am struck by the, the energy and the creativity. And, and I find the young people, but I think all Pakistanis are very keen uh, to see progress in their country and, and, and to see Pakistan achieve its full uh, potential. Uh, so those are some of my early impressions after four months in Pakistan. And Excellency, how would you describe the bilateral relation between Pakistan and Canada? As we know that uh, Pakistan has very cordial and friendly relation with Canada and uh, uh, Canadian economy and uh, on global in politics, Canada is playing a very, very important role. So as a high commissioner, how you describe these bilateralism between the two countries? Uh, well, you're correct in saying that Canada and Pakistan have been friends and, and partners uh, for a long time. In, in fact, since the very early years after Pakistan's independence, uh, we've had partnership and cooperation in a broad range of areas. It, it really is a, a, a rich partnership that, that, that spans um, many sectors, and, and we can talk about some of these um, in our chat today. It includes um, trade and investment relations, it includes development cooperation, it includes political ties, and the promotion of shared values. Um, one one particular, particular element of the relationship which I would like to say a few words about is the person or the people to people ties. It's very important uh, I think. It, well it's very important and, and increasingly so. Uh, I'm delighted that today we have approximately 300,000 Uh, Canadians of Pakistani heritage, uh, many of them born in Pakistan or the children of Pakistani parents. That would be about 1% of Canada's population. Um, overwhelmingly, these are people who've emigrated to Canada. 
They're very well integrated into our society. If you visit Canada, you'll meet Pakistanis in business. And they're playing a very important role for the development in, of... Well, yes, in, in so many areas. They're, they're in business, you meet them in the private sector, they're in universities. We even have members of our parliament and senators who are Pakistani-born or Pakistani heritage. So it, it's, a, it's a group that is very well integrated and very much enriches the Canadian cultural uh, mosaic. And, 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 and we're delighted to see that, that large community uh, and, and being so successful. Uh, also in the area of people-to-people -people ties, I'm delighted that we have more than 4,000 Pakistani students studying in Canada at present. At currently, you're mentioning that? 4,000 4, are okay. in Canada at our universities or other educational institutions. It's one of the largest or the fastest growing uh, groups of foreign students in Canada. Um, they too integrate very well into our society, into our universities and schools. Uh, when I meet officials from universities in Canada, they're always speaking very positively about their Pakistani students, how, how dedicated they are, how successful they are academically, but also how... And they, they are a goodwill ambassador as uh, well, you know. Well, they're, they're like ambassadors, yes, they're, they're, they're enriching the yeah. environment in our universities, in our, in our communities uh, where they're living. Uh, so, so I think this is a very important and, 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 and to some extent a new part of the relationship. If you look back 20 years ago, there would have been much smaller numbers of Pakistani Canadians and Pakistani uh, students in Canada. But as I said, we're up to 300,000 Pakistani Canadians, 4,000 students. And, and as you've mentioned, each of these people, each of these individuals, is like an ambassador from Pakistan to, to Canada and, and they're bridges between the two countries. They know Pakistan and they know Canada. Exactly, exactly. And they have their networks in each country. So I believe that uh, th these people can be very helpful in moving the relationship forward and taking it to a higher level in the years ahead. And actually, as you mentioned that uh, Canada is playing a very important role in development sector. So can you briefly tell us that uh, in which areas uh, Canada is providing uh, development assistance uh, for the prosperity of this country and uh, specifically in which area you are uh, actually investor or your multinational companies are working in Pakistan for the development? Uh, yes, with regard to the development assistance program, uh, as I mentioned, we have had a presence that dates back decades, it dates back at least to the 1960s. Um, over time, the focus has, has changed. But at the present time, we're focused on four particular areas, and, and I'd like to say a few words about each of the four. One is uh, Canada has been very active and has provided substantial funding in the campaign to eradicate polio in Pakistan and also in the other two countries where polio is still present, Afghanistan and uh, Nigeria. Uh, we're very encouraged at the tremendous progress that has been made, and we believe that we collectively are on the brink of eradicating the um, transmission. It's a milestone, I think. It's very important. It will be a huge milestone, and we're almost there. Um, a couple of years ago, there were more than 300 new cases of polio in Pakistan. Uh, in 2016, it was just down to a handful, and, and I think in the months ahead, uh, we will achieve the goal of eradication of transmission. I, I, I credit the, the Pakistani government for its leadership on this. I, I'm delighted that, that through our funding, w we've been supporting UNICEF and the World Health Organization, who in turn are working with the Pakistani government to achieve the goal of eradicating polio from Pakistan and from the world. Uh, so that's one area. A, a second area is in education. Uh, we have prov been providing funding for a number of years now, focused on teacher training, especially for primary uh, school teachers. Uh, Canada believes very strongly that it's essential that all children, girls and boys around the world have access to education and access to quality education. And an important way to achieve the quality is by ensuring that the teachers are, are well trained. They are well, well trained and well qualified as well. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so I, I'm very pleased that we've been providing funding in that area and I understand that some 400,000 teachers in Pakistan have benefited from this programming, and by extension, millions of Pakistani uh, boys and girls 
ha have benefited uh, from our support in the education sector. Um, and the third area where we're active in development cooperation is women's economic empowerment. Uh, Canada believes very strongly in the equality between men and women. We also believe that it's important that women be given opportunities to develop their entrepreneurial skills. So and that to they play can, their role for development. Uh, absolutely, for yes. Um, I, I think when you look at development in countries around the world, it, it, it's so essential that any society, any country, benefits from all of its citizens in terms of its development, the men and the women. Uh, so we're supporting projects aimed at helping women specifically develop their entrepreneurial skills so that they can be full participants in the economy of Pakistan. And finally, the fourth area where we have development programming at present is focused on strengthening governance. And in, in, in particular, we provided support uh, to the Electoral Commission to in, ensure and in, enhance strength in Pakistan's capacity um, to, to have free and fair um, elections. And I, I'm, I'm pleased that so much progress has been made in terms of strengthening Pakistan's democracy in recent years. So, uh, one, my supplementary question that, uh, do you satisfy with the measures taken by the government of Pakistan to eradicate this polio from this soil? And uh, what is your future plan uh, regarding to eliminate or to eradicate this polio from this country? Uh, well, as I said, I, 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 I believe the Pakistani government has shown uh, very strong leadership in eradicating polio. Um, I've had the opportunity to meet uh, Senator Farooq, who is the Prime Minister's um, uh, special advisor or, or point person on polio eradication. Uh, she's a very dedicated um, and committed leader. And I've had the opportunity to visit the, the, the operations center here in Islamabad, um, where the campaign to eradicate polio is being managed and, and, and monitored. And I've been very impressed by all the professionals I've seen, seen there. And, and as I mentioned, there are organizations like UNICEF and the World Health Organization, through which Canada is providing funding, that are working very closely with the Pakistani government. Uh, so I, I am very optimistic that we will achieve our goal uh, very soon, uh, bringing an end to the transmission of polio. And um, if you think back um, 45 years, maybe before you were born, we all celebrated when smallpox was eradicated. I think that was around 1971, eradicated from the world. And I hope to see in the months ahead, or, or very soon, polio and other terrible disease um, eradicated uh, from the entire world. So, Excellency, uh, it's a delightful that you mentioned that Canada is providing assistance to Election Commission uh, for free and fair elections, which is more important for the democratic institution. But my question is that, that uh, do you satisfy with the uh, democratic institution role in Pakistan? And do you think that uh, our democracy is uh, uh, now very strong and uh, politicians are playing a very important role in the parliament? So how do you see the future of democracy in Pakistan? Hmm. Uh, well, let me say firstly, uh, or let me repeat, I'm, I'm quite new to Pakistan, so I'm, I'm still learning and I have a tremendous amount to, to learn on, on your democratic institutions and on so many other areas. Uh, but my impression after my, my early months here is that Pakistan and Pakistani democracy has made great strides in recent years. Uh, we did, of course, in 2013, have a peaceful transition from, from one party to another. That's an important landmark in any country. Um, in my short time in Pakistan, I've had the opportunity to meet many political figures. I, I've met many members of the, uh, the National Assembly, and senators, I, I've met ministers, I've met chief ministers in a couple of the uh, provinces. And, and I, I've been very impressed with what I've seen. I, I, I think there are many very committed people um, in, in politics in Pakistan who are, are, are dedicated to advancing Pakistan's democracy. But the other thing I would mention, and, and I say this based on my experience in, in a number of other countries where I've lived, and in my own country, Canada for that matter, it's important that we remember that democracy or, or politics is not just for the politicians. It's important that we keep in mind that it, the demo Pakistan's democracy belongs to all of Pakistanis, just as Canada's democracy belongs to all of us. 
And as I travel around the country and meet people, young and, 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 and older, uh, I see a very strong commitment to democratic, democratic values. Uh, so having said all that, I, I feel very optimistic that in the years ahead, Pakistan will continue to improve and consolidate its democratic institutions and, and work towards building uh, a stable and, and secure democratic society where the rights of everyone are, are, are recognized and an inclusive society in which everyone is respected and can contribute. And Excellency, that you mentioned uh, women economic empowerment. Uh, you have seen that uh, our women are playing very important role in our politics, in National Assembly, in Senate, yes. in other institutions, in armed forces, in law enforcement agencies, in PAE, and many other, you can name the institution. But uh, uh, do you satisfy with the measures taken by this government to empower the women so they can play a very important proactive role for the development and prosperity of this country? Well, the first thing I would like to say is um, in Canada, my country, and I, I, you may know this already, but uh, for the first time in our history, we have a government, half of whose ministers are women and half are men. Uh, Canadians elected a new government a little more than a year ago, headed by uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, and he appointed a cabinet of 30 members. 15 of them were women and 15 were men. I think it's uh, the first country in the world, <laughs> maybe. Well, I'm not sure if we're the first, but there aren't very many countries, certainly, that, that have achieved that. And uh, I, I just mentioned that as an anecdote. If you looked back at a Canadian government 30 years ago or 50 years ago, the ministers you would have seen 30 men and maybe one or two women so we have come a long way and I think looking around the world we're seeing many other countries are uh, making progress in this regard and it comes back to the point that we discussed a few few moments ago and that is I believe that any country or any society in the world in order to achieve its potential it needs to harness the energy, the creativity, the ideas, the input. And to explore their potential and uh, to provide everyone. the yeah. uh, yes. opportunities. Op opportunities for everyone. I if you have 50% of your population, I'm referring to women, who are marginalized or discriminated against or not allowed to enter political office for whatever reason, uh, that has an impact on the success of the society. And similarly, in, in the private sector, if you have half the population not being able to contribute to the growth of businesses, small and large, it again, it holds back development. Uh, so I, as I say, in, in Canada, we've come a long way. It's been a gradual process. But I'm seeing in Pakistan the same kind of very positive movement towards women uh, being more and more engaged in all facets of society. And, and, and therefore, I, I think Pakistan is very much moving in, in a positive direction in that regard. And I'm pleased that Canada, as a friend of Pakistan, modestly, through some of our programs, is able to support those efforts to ensure that women are full participants in society. Excellency, here we take a short commercial break. We will continue our discussion after this. Welcome back, viewers. Excellency, you explain in very detail about your development uh, assistance program in Pakistan in various sectors that you are providing the assistance. Uh, so my question is that the trade and economic diplomacy is very important nowadays across the globe politics. Yes. So do you satisfy with the trade volume between Canada and Pakistan at a, as a, a newly appointed High Commissioner? Uh, what are your priorities, especially to increase the trade volume and economic cooperation between the two countries? Uh, 
Yes, uh, we have spoken about development cooperation and that's an important part of the relationship by, but of course our trade and economic relations are also very important and of growing importance. I'm pleased that in 2015 for the first time our bilateral trade exceeded one billion dollars. That's one billion Canadian dollars which means about 750 million US dollars. Uh, for 2016 we're still waiting for the final figures but there's another increase and it's probably around 1.5 billion Canadian dollars. So the volume of trade is growing, it's higher than it ever has been before and I'm optimistic that it will continue to grow in the years ahead and of course that's part of my job to try to make that, make that happen. Um, most of the trade at present is Canada exporting oil seeds and other agricultural products to Pakistan and Pakistan exporting textiles to, to Canada. I do hope in the years ahead that we can not only increase the volume of trade but also seek to diversify uh, the trade relationship between our two countries because I think there are many sectors where there's scope yes. to be doing a lot more. And uh, when we talk about economic relations of course we shouldn't just be talking about trade, there's also investment and, and partnerships joint ventures uh, between the two countries. Between the uh, private sector as well. Uh, and absolutely with the private sector. And uh, one of the reasons I'm, I'm optimistic is because when I look at Pakistan I see some of the sectors where Pakistan I believe will grow significant, significantly in the years ahead. And these, some of these are sectors where Canada has great expertise and experience so I, I, I think the, 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 there's great scope for, for partnerships of different kinds and in investment and trade. And to mention some of those sectors, agriculture is an obvious one. Uh, Pakistan uh, has great agricultural output already but also great potential. As I said, I was in Multan just a couple of days ago and, and I could see how, how fertile the soil is, how productive the agricultural sector is. Uh, Canada has a long-standing tradition of agricultural production, we have state-of-the-art technologies, we have food processing uh, techniques and technologies. So that, that's one area where I think there could be uh, enhanced cooperation between the two countries, between our private sectors. Another is um, infrastructure. Uh, Canada is a vast country, the second largest one in the world, so we have great experience um, building um, transport and, uh, and communications infrastructure. Renewable energy is another important sector. This is very important. Uh, it, and we have an uh, energy crisis, you know, yes. uh, in this field. Yeah, my, yeah my, my sense after four months in Pakistan is overcoming the energy challenges it has to be one of the highest priorities of Pakistan. And, and I know it is a priority for, for your, your government, governments both at the federal and provincial level. Um, in any country, y you need that energy capacity in order for the private sector for in, in all the different sectors to, to grow and achieve, um, a, a, a achieve their goals. You need a reliable energy supply. Canada is a country which is very strong in energy, hydroelectric energy, we have oil and gas, we have nuclear energy, um, but increasingly renewable energies like solar power and wind energy are, are, are attracting much uh, research and um, innovation in Canada and, and I'm pleased to see that, that there are some Canadian companies for example in the area of solar energy that are exploring opportunities for investment and partnership in, in Pakistan. Uh, ICT is another sector where I think Pakistan will be growing significantly in the years ahead and Canada has many uh, information and communications technology companies that are very successful and, and, and probably have interesting products or, or services uh, to offer to, to Pakistan. Uh, so all in all I, I think there's scope for a lot more economic uh, collaboration between the private sectors of our two countries. Uh, the challenge for me is to, to make it happen by finding ways to identify opportunities and, and put Pakistani private sector companies in Dr. contact sir. with Canadians. So sir, how do you see the um, climate of investment in Pakistan as this government is taking a very holistic measures to restore the confidence of the foreign investor in Pakistan and as you mentioned that agribusiness, information technology yes. and uh, uh, like other many fields you know that uh, in communication, in energy and many other sectors 
a lot of potential for the foreign investment is here. But do you satisfy in the, uh, uh, the measures that are taken by this government to restore the confidence level of the investor, especially Canadian investor? Yes. Uh, well, it's a very good question. Uh, in my experience, any country around the world, if you want to attract investment and, and, and if you want to achieve sustained high levels of economic growth, it's so important to foster the best possible investment climate and that means reducing as much as possible red tape, uh, bureaucracy, making procedures as simple and straightforward as possible, combating corruption of course and, and, and many other things. Uh, my understanding, and, and again I'm quite new to Pakistan, but my understanding is that progress has been made in recent years in Pakistan. Uh, there's the World Bank's ease of doing business chart that comes out every year and, and Pakistan has been uh, moving up the chart, it, it has been making progress. Uh, so, so I am encouraged, I, I, I think things are moving in a positive direction, uh, but, but as, I, as I've just said, Pakistan like any other country um, should continue to do its utmost to, to make the investment climate and the business climate attractive and that's how you attract and friendly, friendly policies, business. yes. Yeah, friendly policies. That's, that's how you attract Canadian business, but it's also how you attract business from any other part of the world. Business people make investments in another country when they see that there's an attractive climate where they have confidence that the rule of law is present. They know what the tax structures are. They know that there are not going to be complications with red tape and bureaucracy, and they know that they're not going to be facing problems of corruption and all of that. So, so I, I encourage Pakistan's governments to continue their, their good efforts and the private sector as well to, 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 to make the uh, uh, business environment as, as friendly uh, as possible. Excellency, as you know that Pakistan has been victim of terrorism and militancy and uh, extremism more than one decade and still we are fighting to overcome this menace of terrorism from its yes. side. But how you see the armed forces role, our civilian institution role, the government's role to eradicate and to counter this terrorism from its side. And do you think that Pakistan will be successful to root out the terrorism here? Uh, well, let me say that uh, from afar, before I came to Pakistan, over the last 10 or 15 years, I, I've, I've seen in the news various uh, terrorist attacks in Pakistan and, and therefore before I arrived here I, I was aware of the struggle that Pakistan has had with terrorism in recent years. Um, I've seen the same figures that, that you have and, and everything indicates that great progress has been made in recent years in combating terrorism in Pakistan and uh, the, the number of the frequency of terrorist attacks has, has dropped significantly. There are parts of the country that were infested with terrorists uh, a few years ago, which now um, security has been restored. Uh, so th that's, that's very encouraging that that progress has been made. Uh, secondly, I want to mention that today terrorism threatens all of us around the world. Even in Canada, on the other side of the world, we have been victim of some terrorist it attacks. It has become a, a uh, global issue. It, it's a global <laughs> phenomenon. We all see in the news there have been attacks in different parts of the world. So I, I think it's important to, to underline that all of us not only have to combat terrorism in our own countries and obviously do that within the confines of the rule of law and respect for human rights, but it's also important that we all work together, work with our neighbours and work with our partners around the world uh, because the terrorist networks today, they don't recognize national boundaries. The terrorists will commit an act in one country and then flee across the border to another country. We see this in different parts of the world. So I think all of us have to work together to ensure that we're, we're working as effectively as possible to, in, to ensure that terrorism is, um, is, is eradicated and combated uh, globally. And Excellency, as we know that uh Canadian society is very tolerant, very moderate, and your country is a great advocate and champion of human rights. So, uh, especially uh, your country is providing assistance in human rights sector here in Pakistan. But how do you see the human rights situation in Pakistan? 
and especially in the context of some social media activist disappearance uh, a few week before and we have seen uh, the reaction from some other country as well but uh, how do you see this situation uh, well let me say firstly that you are right that Canada is a country highly committed to human rights globally it's an integral part of our foreign policy and our development policy uh, but I should also add that in Canada domestically as well human rights are front and center in terms of our laws and and, and how we we govern ourselves and Canadians have, have a very strong commitment to human rights and, and we recognize that it's essential uh, for, for for achieving and maintaining a, a peaceful and prosperous and just uh, society. Uh, one area in human rights where Canada is particularly active internationally and I've always, already touched on it in the context of development in Pakistan and that is gender equality and ensuring that the rights of girls as well as boys and women as well as men are, are, are respected uh, around the world. In that context we've been encouraged by uh, positive steps in Pakistan such as the law that was adopted last year by the National Assembly uh, against uh, honor killings, so-called honor killings, uh, the anti-rape law, uh, strengthening the, the legal mechanisms to combat uh, those unacceptable phenomena. Uh, so w we are seeing encouraging things happening in Pakistan and many other parts of the world, but we're, we're committed to that goal of uh, promoting the, the, the welfare and the um, equality between the genders it, uh, around the world. Uh, you mentioned specifically the recent disappearance of some social media activists. Uh, Canada is deeply concerned uh, about these reports and we encourage the Pakistani authorities to, to spare no efforts to ensure uh, that, that these people who have yes. disappeared are, are returned safely uh, to, their, to their homes. Uh, freedom of speech and freedom of expression, and that includes the work of social media in this day and age, is an essential human right and, and it's essential to the functioning of a free uh, democratic society. Uh, the social media, like the more traditional media, like uh, television and radio and newspapers, they play an essential role in the debate in democracy. And playing a very important and, role. Uh, important and, and essential. Y you can't have a, a, a real democracy if you don't have that freedom of expression and that contribution, that role of the media in debating issues and holding our leaders uh, to account. So Excellency, one, my question is uh, regarding the global politics and especially that uh, we are witnessing the very changing in the policies of America after coming into power of Donald Trump's that uh, your trade, 80 percent trade of Canada, uh, you are doing with America. So in election campaign when Donald Trump announced that he may abolish the North America free trade agreement and if it is finished that uh, your economy will be suffer and your trade so how uh, would you actually overcome this issue and uh, uh, how you will sustain your economy and trade with America with new administration especially uh, well let me say that Canada and the United States have a very close and an excellent long-standing relationship Dates, dates back centuries. We have the longest undefended border in the world between Canada and the United States and as you've rightly mentioned we have very intense uh, economic integration. We have more than a billion dollars of trade every day between Canada and the United States. Um, the United States will have a new uh, president as uh, later uh, this week in just a few days time. Um, I'm confident uh, that Canada and the United States will continue to maintain an excellent uh, relationship. Uh, the, the economic aspect of the relationship is important to Canada and it's important to the United States. There are many companies in North America that produce products partly in one country and partly in the other. So I'm, I'm, I'm completely confident that we will continue to work closely with our American friends uh, to, to manage the economic relationship to ensure uh, that it continues to benefit uh, both our countries. And Excellency, lastly, what the food you like in Pakistan? And you are visiting the four provinces and other cities and South Punjab and Karachi and other area. 
and how you describe the cultural heritage in Pakistan that you mentioned that Pakistan is a very rich culture you know a diverse city and you want to promote actually cultural ties between the two countries so how you explain it well let me start my answer in Urdu Muje Pakistani Kana Pasan Hai I enjoy Pakistani food very much uh, so many tasty dishes uh, biryani is one of my favorites jalebi is my favorite dessert uh, but uh, Pakistanis should all be uh, proud of such a rich culinary tradition that you you have in your country uh, but more broadly uh, Pakistan it is clear to me has a very rich rich culture in, in so many ways there's a tradition of producing handicrafts, there's carpets, jewelry, woodwork. I, I've seen uh, some of this production in my travels around the country. Uh, beautiful work uh, that's done drawing on traditions that date back for centuries in many cases. Uh, there's also a very rich uh, musical scene, a literary scene. I know the Lahore Literary Festival is coming up in just a, a few weeks time. Uh, a vibrant visual arts scene as well. And as I said earlier, it has struck me when I travel around Pakistan um, how much is happening artistically and creatively in, in all parts of the country. And in the different regions, you see the local variances and, and, and difference. And, and it's that diversity of the culture that makes the country uh, so, so fascinating. Uh, so for me, it's a real treat to discover all of this and, 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 and to, to enjoy it. And Mr. Perry Calderwood, uh, I'm grateful to you for your time that you've given. The concluding remarks that I want to ask from you, that any message that you want to give to the people of Pakistan from the Canadian government and Canadian peoples. Yes. Uh, well, first of all, thank you so much for this interview on, on Channel 5. It, it's a pleasure to be here on Diplomatic Enclave and, and uh, it, it's been uh, it's been very pleasant to, to chat with you and to have this opportunity to convey uh, some thoughts and ideas to your, your many viewers. Um, messages for the Pakistani people, just picking up from the last point, I really think all Pakistanis should be very proud of the, the rich uh, culture of your country, the diversity of, you have so many languages, your, your wonderful cuisine, the arts, uh, so much to be proud of. Also your wonderful natural heritage spectacular mountains, the deserts, the fertile plains. Uh, you really have a tremendous amount to be proud of. And as I've said earlier, I, I see tremendous energy and potential in your country. And as Canada's High Commissioner to Pakistan, it's a pleasure to observe this, but it's also an honor and a pleasure for me to see how I can play a role in, in, um, in finding ways for Canada to continue to work with Pakistan to help Pakistan achieve its full potential and, and to further build the long-standing partnership uh, between our two countries. Uh, Your Excellency, we have a very meaningful, constructive, informative discussion during our programs and it will be very good information for our viewers that they will come to know how much things are happening between the two countries in a very healthy manner. Yes. So uh, I am grateful to you for sparing your precious moment for our program. Bahut shukriya. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. And viewers, uh, this is the end of the program. Thank you very much.